this video we're going to be working through the retainers functionality that is available in Colleague 7. This is functionality designed for the executive search market. It allows for you to raise invoiceable milestones based on achieving particular goals that have been agreed with a client during the recruitment process. In this video we're going to go through the admin side of activating retainers and then the process of using retainers on a requirement through to raising an invoice. So we're going to start this video within the admin area uh, and specifically looking at global settings. Um, so if we go into the global settings section within admin and then we'll look at the options within global settings with reference to retainers. And the best thing to do here is really just type in um, retainer uh, in the search section top right hand side. There's four sections to work through. Um, one is allow use of retainers in requirements. That's literally the setting to enable whether or not retainers is turned on or off and that obviously needs to be set to yes if you want to use it. Um, when retainers has been turned on, on a requirement there will be a flag called use retainers which needs to be set to yes or no to dictate whether or not the retainers tab actually appears. Um, and then obviously the option here is asking whether or not the default on that flag is set to yes or no. Uh, so you can have retainers turned on but you could have them by default turned off against the requirement um, so that option is there um, you've got a retainers tab label um, as with all the tab labels you can name them so we've referred to it as retainers by default uh, but if you may want to rename it to be projects or milestones or whatever is, is appropriate to your business uh, but that's the tab label and then the last option is to use back office for retainers and requirements so effectively if you're planning to use the retainers and then when they're being completed, actually go through into the process of generating an invoice from the retainer, then this needs to be marked as yes. Um, otherwise, if the retainer section is effectively going to be used a bit like an enhanced checklist where it's just monitoring and, and keeping track of the, uh, the retainers against the requirement, then this would be set to no. Um, but I've set this to yes, obviously, so that we've got a full workflow uh, to be demonstrated here. The next point to cover is user group permissions. So if we go into use group permissions, that's on the users row within the admin area, and then we select a user group. So under the permission group of requirements, you'll find there's now an option for add edit retainers. And this obviously grants the ability to uh, edit a retainer and to add a retainer, and this obviously needs to be set to full access to grant the user the ability to be able to not just see retainers, uh, but also amend them and add to them as they need to. So those are the admin options in relation to uh, retainers. So we're going to start within our requirements. Uh, and the first point of note is obviously that the use retainers flag has appeared. Off, this is obviously off the back of the option in global settings being set to yes to enable retainers. So with use retainers set to yes, you have a back office tab. Again, if the back office functionality is enabled with it and the retainers tab. Uh, and if that was set to no, then the tabs would disappear from view and also the own company um, which is set there as part of using back office with this functionality um, also would be hidden as well but we'll leave that obviously set to yes there because so we plan on using it in terms of the uh, back office tab just to address this quickly um, the, this effectively consists of the invoice details stored against the company record and they're pulled over into the requirements uh, on the basis that you're using back office with the functionality. If the back office flag was set to no, um, then the back office tab um, would be uh, not enabled. Essentially, the, the retainers tab would be enabled, but the back office tab um, wouldn't be shown. Um, so if we go through into the retainers area, and then we just go through the options that are available within this section. Um, so we start obviously by adding a retainer. And what I'll do is I will add a manual retainer. So if we said that we're going to add a manual retainer, and this is the initial um, retainer to start the project. And we'll give it a unit of one there, and we'll say that we're going to bill 1,500, expected date being, say, the 26th. And we'll save that. And mark as complete, you've got as a manual flag there that you can set um, that effectively dictates whether or not the, the, the item has been completed. Um, but I'll come back to that. So that's a manual retainer, which isn't being updated by any workflow being run in the system. If we add another retainer now, uh, this time we'll add a, say, a CV sent retainer. Um, so this is 
uh, to send say eight high quality CVs I could give it a unit survey we'll say that we'll bill again 1500 once that's been delivered you can obviously specify a PO number that be called from the company record and a unique reference number as well we'll give it an expected date of say the 2nd of September and then we'll use the um, autocomplete function um, so what will happen is the units um, will be counted as, a, as an automatic count as you're running the CV sent workflow. And the idea is once it hits the specified number of units, then the item will be completed automatically. Next, if we go to, let's say, the interview, um, you, what you can do is you can specify the interview, but you can also specify the type of interview as well. So let's say that first interview as a retainer. Um, let's say first interview retainer and we need to arrange three first interviews in order to be able to trigger the next invoice and again we'll, we'll have that as auto complete as well we'll put an expected date on that to be say the, the ninth and we'll save that so what's what's obviously building up is a timeline based on how, how this project is expected to proceed um, and then we move on to the next retainer which would be the, uh, the actual uh, placement being made so candidate placed unit one and then that's can be the the final invoice based on achieving that and again we'll put an expected date of the let's say the 23rd of September and I'll leave that with autocomplete set to no um, so that effectively we can verify that the candidate has turned up, verify that the candidate is, is proceeding before we um, set that flag to go. Um, so effectively those are the uh, retainers that we'll, we'll start with to begin with and then I'll go through the workflows and we'll see how these um, retainers are updated automatically. So step one will be to actually mark the initial retainer as completed so that we can actually begin the actual project itself an invoice um, so what I'm going to do to begin with is just go to that beginning retainer and mark this as complete and what that then does is it effectively releases this retainer item ready to be invoiced so to sh demonstrate how that looks if I open up the back office area I'll do that into a different tab and we go to generate invoices within the generate invoices area under the type of retainers will now see this retainer item that we've marked ready to to be invoiced um, and following the full workflow we then obviously create an invoice um, and from an invoice record being generated we could then create um, a invoice document and obviously send off uh, to the invoice contact uh, a copy of that invoice document uh, to be processed that's obviously running through the back office workflow from then onwards with regards to that raised invoice so that was generating an invoice obviously for the initial manual retainer to just start the project so next along is the uh, sending of CVs in particular this send eight high quality CVs retainer you'll note there's a count currently of zero um, but it is marked as autocomplete so what that effectively means is it will monitor the CVs that are being sent um, to the contact and it will count the CVs against the retainer and at the point where it reaches eight it will then mark it as complete so what I've done here is I've got um, some candidates here that I've lined up to be sent I'll use the discard and update process just to highlight this we'll just send one candidate to begin with and then when that candidate is processed we'll go back here and you can see that um, we've got a count of one now it's against this retainer so if we process one CV and one has been recorded there against the uh, retainer so if we now go back to our candidates and instead now let's look to send all of these candidates and I'll select a, I'll select a template here let's send now
And if we return to our retainers, we'll see now that we have eight counted against our CV sent retainer. So we've got eight units, eight counted. So the autocomplete has triggered it to now be completed. So this retainer has now been released to the back office area to be processed because we've sent off eight CVs to our contact. So the next stage along is the interview retainer. And specifically with this interview retainer, we've done it on the basis of first interview. So there are obviously other interview types that can be run, but this is only for first interviews where we record and count uh, against the retainer on that instance. Obviously there's a count of zero at the moment, um, three units required, and we've got autocomplete set there. So to demonstrate this, if I first and foremost do an interview which is not a first interview, so this is a telephone interview, I did it for the 25th at five o'clock say, and we save that. There's obviously an email workflow we could run, but just to stay with the retainer workflow, close that off. And you can see here that we've got an interview arranged there, but it's a telephone interview, so it doesn't count as a first interview. It's not recorded against the retainer. So if I go now back to the candidate and let's increase or take the next step and actually do it as a first interview this time. Change the date and time. And if I save that, um, again, I'll, I'll close off the email workflow, but against the retainer, what you can see now there is that you've got a count of one against that first interview. Again, if we were now to increase on that interview, so they take that interview forward into the second interview, the retainer is very much uh, based on first interviews only. So a second interview progression for that candidate still doesn't count as a unit towards this retainer. This retainer is on the basis of first interviews. So we still have a count of one there. Um, so just to move on now, we'll create another interview. Um, it's going to be against Trevor. And we'll select a date, a time, and save that. But that's a first interview retainer. So if we go back to our uh, retainers now, you can see there that the count's increased to two. It's also, at this, as this current stage, still not marked as complete. So if we're now to do our final third first interview, what we'll be able to see is that um, this will complete off our interview retainer. So that's now marked with three against three units. So that's completed our retainer and that's obviously opened up uh, for that to be invoiced in the back office area. So the last point to cover is the candidate placed retainer. So this is the retainer that will be triggered by the placement um, actually being run to uh, place the candidate into the position. Um, note that the autocomplete is set to no. So although the counts will still work in terms of counting the placement, um, it will not automatically be signed as completed because that autocomplete is set to no. If it was set to yes, then obviously it will complete. Uh, but for the purposes of this demonstration, we'll, we'll demonstrate it on the basis that it's set to no. So if we go over to our candidates, what we'll do is we're going to place Bertie Portal. Obviously start by making the offer. We'll just create an offer there. Now an offer obviously isn't a placement yet. That offer needs to be accepted before it becomes a placement. So at this stage, um, the, the the count is still zero. There was a and there is a retainer option for offer, but we've just done it against placement. So what we'll do now is we'll accept the offer, and in that process, it will create a placement, essentially placing our candidate. So we've now got our placement for our candidate. So if we go back to our requirement now, on the retainers tab we'll see that the account has been recorded against the placed retainer. So you can see that it's been um, set there. Obviously it's not been completed because autocomplete was set to no. Um, so if we want to now set this to yes, we'd access the retainer and then we'd update the um, marked as complete option to yes. And that obviously sets it again, releasing the retainers uh, to the back office area. So if we just go back to our back office area here, We'll go over to generate invoices. We'll switch the type to retainers. And you can see now that there's 
the three retainers that um, we've been working through there now all marked ready to be invoiced. So that covers the retainer functionality now available within the system.